I'm Mario Spots, and welcome to the third episode of The Kitchen Debates. My guest today is Henry Marx. His appearance on the show two episodes ago garnered such a positive reaction that I decided to invite him back. Today he wants to discuss presidents and the enemy. Stay tuned for a presidential news quiz of the week, and welcome to Presidential History. Henry, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, sure. It's a pleasure always. So what did you want to talk about today? So today I wanted to talk about the presidency and how it relates to our adversaries, specifically China. Okay. Um, is there a specific reason why you would consider China an enemy of the United States? I think, I think the biggest reason happens to be cultural. In the US, our society is very individualistic. We're bottom up, so to speak. Everyone has their own sort, sort, of, sort of things going on and their own things they want in their life. But in China, it's very top down. It's very community focused above the individual. And I think this is a clash that we're seeing in all sorts of different economic, political, and social differences between the two countries. Our, our relationship with China was a lot more symbiotic maybe 10 years ago. But as time is progressing, our, we're coming more and more and more separate entities. They have their own spheres of influence, and then we have our own. And over time, we're increasingly going to become less reliant on them. It's funny enough, usually you see Made in China on the back of your iPhone. I finally saw an Apple product that said Made in Vietnam. And so I thought it was very interesting to see how the US and its major corporations are sw switching their manufacturing from what used to be this monolith of a hub to other countries that potentially are more friendly to us. I suppose um, the recent move of IBM, I think they're investing over a billion dollars in building a chip plant here in the United States. Um, several other companies, car companies are starting to move back. Do you think that's rollover from the Trump administration or do you think that's a direct uh, effect of the Biden administration's policies? Or is it a mix? This transition back to the US is something that's really important for, for our protection essentially because Having, having been so reliant on them for certain products in the past, we're finally starting to build these at home, which is really important to our national security in the respect that they can't cut us off from certain things and all of a sudden our economy is screwed. So you want economic independence from China and to make sure that they don't have a cultural influence on us too. I mean, I mean, it's, it's not like I necessarily think Chinese culture is bad. I, I, in fact, I think probably it's the best their, their system, their Confucian system is probably the best way to control their society because that's, and, they, and they've shown this over thousands of years with the rise and fall of many dynasties. But in America, democracy has proven time and time again to be the most effective way to control this country. I think that a big aspect of Chinese culture that uh, works in China and doesn't work in the United States is TikTok. And we've talked about this before, that, there, that the content on TikTok changes based on whether you're in China or in the United States. So what effect do you think that has? And do you think there is like a malevolent aspect of their um, motivation there or, or their efforts? Well, in any foreign policy, there are many, many, many types of wars. There's culture wars, there's uh, like technology wars, there's trade wars, and there are a bunch of others. And then finally, there's a shooting war. Currently, we're seeing many, many, many types of wars, and this is just one of these sort of quasi-tech wars where essentially they're influencing the American population by showing what is degenerative content on these platforms and in some ways swaying the mind of our youth into perhaps behaving a little bit more like this. While the irony is that in China itself they show videos of hardworking people and what is family values and to promote these values. And the, the, the scary thing about TikTok is that the vast amounts of data they collect, biometric data on nearly everything from their users, and they're legally required to share that with the CCP. And so TikTok, is, and in fact, it's such a threat to not US foreign security that every single military serviceman and his extended family is legally not allowed to have TikTok on their phone. So you think that shows a certain adversion, or at least a certain danger that TikTok poses to the United States? I think it's a good example of a different type of war, like beyond, beyond, beyond the conventional idea of a war being 
this thing that where there's a huge battlefield and everyone's fighting to the death. Many types of war can be cyber wars. All these types of wars can be destructive without being necessarily confrontational. And I think TikTok is inevitably going to be a very destructive thing into to our youth. And when they grow up, perhaps it's it's gonna it's gonna lead to some bad values being pervasive in the U.S. I suppose we do have to connect this to a president at some point, right? <laughs> so is there a certain president that you think had an excellent policy as it goes towards China? I mean, obviously, as China and the presidency have changed, each president is in a different position in dealing with China. But do you think that there's one that you see as the standard bearer of dealing with such an adversary? You first see, see Nixon, right? And Nixon makes the first trip to meet with Mao and his foreign secretary in like 20 years, and they open up the Shanghai communique communicate, whatever, however you pronounce that. And so that's the first step to opening up China, and he was praised for his foreign policy. And you've had a lot of bad leaders with, in relation to China. You have Bill Clinton, and one of the, uh, honestly, one of the things that made China the global superpower it is today is when he introduced them to the WTO, the World Trade Organization. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I think, I think a quasi the, 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 the Trump idea of a trade war is not necessarily bad. Just the implementation of how, how the trade worked was bad. I, I guess Biden Biden's sort of idea was a step forward on Trump's. He, instead of the US just sanctioning China for goods and they just sanction us back and then they inevitably go buy those goods from another partner, Biden is trying to do what is unilateral tariffs with all of our NATO allies. So the example is soybeans. The US tariff put tariffs on the import of soybeans into China and all of a sudden they just went to Australia to buy those soybeans and so what we need and this is one of the things I, I very much like that Biden did is unilateral working with our allies sanctions on China to be sure that to, 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 to be sure that they don't grow too much in economic power as to eclipse the US and its allies which inevitably is going to happen but it's just we have to delay that timeline Okay. Do you think that there is one thing that President Biden could be doing better? I mean, it's interesting that you suggest some sort of overlap in Biden and Trump's foreign policy. Oh, there's many overlaps. Right. There, it, there's they a lot exist. more. There's a lot more things that in, inevitably there are a lot more things that Trump and Biden have in common that people just don't talk about uh, in t in terms of all, all all different types of policies. But this is this is one of the big ones. He's sort of building off of his trade policy and um, to, to, to create this interesting dynamic with China. I, I just I just think they've they've been accustomed to this for so long and a lot of their their values and ideas of how the world should work are based on this top-down approach. So it's more classical conditioning than it is uh, brainwashing. I think so yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's a perfect way to end the discussion. <laughs> you know what time it is? Oh gosh. <laughs> it's time to reevaluate my news knowledge. It's time for the presidential news quiz. Yesterday, the president confirmed the rumor that he supports destroying which important Senate practice? Oh, I have no idea. Affirmative action. No, it's the filibuster. It's the filibuster. Biden stated that he wanted to end the filibuster in order to enshrine which medical operation he claims is a human right. Abortion. That's correct. Yesterday, the Hill reported that according to a new poll, what percent of Americans don't want Biden to run in 2024? 60? It's 71. 71. President Biden announced that he will be awarding several people which civil decoration office can often consider the highest in the land? The, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. That's correct. On Thursday, the Supreme Court gave a rare win to the Biden admin, deciding that the president could end which Trump-era immigration policy? Oh, deportation? Uh, uh, DACA? No, it's remain in uh, Mexico. Oh. Conversely, SCOTUS delivered a big blow to Biden's agenda on the environment, ruling that the EPA does not have the power to, car to stop carbon emissions from which essential industrial operations? Is this oil? Power plants. I'll give you. I'll give you the point for that one. Speaking of the environment, this week the Journal reported that Biden took steps to prevent new offshore drilling in what two oceans? Wait, Atlantic and Pacific. That's correct. Uh, the Hill recently reported that a new poll shows Biden could potentially be beat by which noteworthy Republican politician? Ron DeSantis. It's President Trump, actually. Really? In response wow. to several shootings in recent weeks, Biden signed new legislation aimed at what? 
gun control? That's correct. And finally, yesterday Biden said, and quote, America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. What word did he use to describe the United States? Freedom. Actually, it was completely unintelligible. He said, I was a la 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 That's actually true. That's what he said. That's hilarious. So thanks for coming on, Henry. Thank you.